Hey guys, welcome back to Auction Not Included, Clay's Amazing Space Colony Simulator Extraordinaire. My name is Twitchy and we have been on the LZ Alpha for 908 cycles now. Guys, we have been here for a long time, but we have still not left this rock. No, indeed, we are busy trying to make this place safe right now. But the problem that we have with that is the liquid that we are using to try and make this place nice and cool cannot handle the temperatures that we have up here. Anytime that the liquids flow into it, it just bursts into, I'm going to call it steam, but gas. It goes into glass, and we have a great big problem. I have ideas on how to fix that, but first, oh, all the way down here, we have a little bit of a problem up here, and I was trying to make a nice little automation system for being able to keep the power running towards my oxygen machine all the time. Turns out I, I hadn't really thought it through properly, if I am to be honest with you. I was like, hey, the whole time that the uh, battery needs charging, let's charge it with the hydrogen generator, and then when it doesn't, let's just pull in some power from the grid to keep it turning, because as you can see, we end up with without hydrogen in the system occasionally. I kind of wanted to make sure that that was a thing that didn't what didn't happen. But actually, what needs to happen? This knot gate here needs to be deconstructed. I'm just going to tidy up the wires whilst we wait for people to come along and do this. And the thing that I have asked to have put in its place is, of course, a filter gate. I'm going to come through here, and I'm going to put quite a large number on this. We'll just go for, like, 60, something like that. And I will explain the logic here. So, every now and then, this battery will be like, I've got no power, please help. And that will turn the hydrogen generator on. Wonderful. But as I say, occasionally, we run out of hydrogen in this pipe. And that means we can't then recharge. So, after 60 seconds of the battery going, ah! please help, I've got no power. If the hydrogen generator hasn't been able to catch up, that is when the power transformer will click on and provide power from the main grid, which I've, I've got to say, we've got a constant six kilowatts flowing through. We're not like spiking up and destroying stuff. I think we I think we might have got on top of it, guys. Should we have a quick moment to look around and see what all the different power systems are doing? Well, here is my hydrogen vent. It appears to be producing hydrogen, though not an awful amount of uh, cooling up the top here. That's all right, because technically the cooling is a secondary process, and actually the burning of the hydrogen is where we're getting our fuel from here. Over in the steam room, we are making water. That is exactly what we need to be doing. As you can see down here, the double aqua, aqua thermal nullifier. No, 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 no. The double thermal aqua tuna over here what tongue twister who knew is actually producing quite a lot of water that's fine that's fine and because this tank here has got a certain amount of water in it up to this level it's passing on a uh, automation signal to this liquid shuttle valve down here going yes can we please keep siphoning that water out of there beautiful all right let's go and look at our, one of our gas geysers our natural gas geyser this seems to just be turning over beautifully no nothing seems to be going wrong here beautiful number four our first natural gas geyser unfortunately a little bit warm i would really like to set up its own cooling system over here for the natural gas but actually as it goes when it's passing the hydrogen through which this sensor is about it is cooling the gas and eventually this thermo sensor will tick over let this gas pump go and uh, pump through so we're, we're kind of thermally uh, thermally restricted here but that that's kind of cool that, that is actually the the kind of story for the entire base, I think I have to say. This guy looks like he's dormant. Yes, indeed. Oh, number six is our um, a big shame, a big folly. This, this this should have been our major power source, and in fact, actually, what it is is a major power drain. It's a bit of a shame. It's a bit of a shame. As you can see, we're producing steam outside. Not where we want the steam, we want the steam inside. But we are at two molten slicksters inside here now. So if we get enough of these molten slicksters, these guys will actually provide enough petrol uh, via this pump here to keep this guy turning over. Uh, that's kind of the hope, the plan, the uh, the, 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 the aspiration from go at this point going on forwards. We've got another egg as well, so it should be wonderful. But space yes space indeed we're gonna have some problems here i need to empty out all of this ethanol it, it just needs to go and i think the place that i'm going to dump it is indeed just just underneath now unfortunately we can't get down there to actually build that so i'm gonna have to first start thinking about how we're going to move it i think i think if i just do this we can start thinking about dumping all of the ethanol down in this little area down here we could probably push this pit uh, this um puffed out of here I, I, it's not been so long since i've done that with any critters that i can't remember what any of them are called no why would you think that what, what? Hey, um, we could push this guy out. Maybe, maybe give him a little escape route out of here. But mainly, just dump all of the ethanol down into that hole, and then we'll deal with it after that. We'll we'll find a way of making things nice and neat and tidy after that point. Because you know me, neat and tidy bases are, are the way forwards, right? Cubic appears to be having a little bit of trouble down here, and I think I know why. Is he allowed through these doors? We're about to find out. We're about to. F so, Cubic does indeed have a little bit of. Um, 
What's he doing? Why is he... Oh, he was eating in his suit, so we couldn't quite tell. Cubic, do you not have a table to sit and eat at? 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. No, there should definitely be enough seats here. Why was he eating out? No, cube, no, cube, cubic, no. Over, over this way. You can't go in. Why? Dump that suit. So we've got Jelly coming up here to come along and do a little bit of a delivery of the steam just to see if this guy will fix up. I'm a little bit worried that all the super hot material at its feet will continue to cause it to be super hot. I don't know, 299 degrees is very hot, but I don't think it's over the overheat temperature. 200, oh, no, I stand very much corrected. It is exactly 25 degrees over the overheat temperature. We don't, we don't want you to do that. Uh, disable auto repair. Let's turn all of those off for now. We very much need to get the cooling going first, and that is very much going to involve getting this done. But for um, some reason, unfortunately, Miss Align is trapped. Oh no, she's not in here anymore. Okay, brilliant. She, oh no, that's Forest. I thought I was about to be like, oh, she's sleeping on the job. But no, Forest is. Okay, cycle nine ten. I think finally we're getting to the point where everyone's willing to get the al uh, the aluminium up to the vent. I actually wanted to say the ethanol out of the pipe, but you know the aluminium came up to the vent to enable the the ethanol to come out of the pipe. And hopefully, as soon as Mimi finishes this particular job, yeah, there we go. We're gonna have liquids pouring down out of the vent down here. I'm not sure how long it's gonna take to empty this. Looking at this here. Oh man, 10, so it's gonna take about 300 seconds or so. That's like five minutes, right? Woo, that's an entire cycle. That's an actual entire cycle. I just, I just hope we've got the room down here. Uh, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna open it up, I'm gonna open it up. I, uh, hoping is not the winner, right? <laughs> we just make it a square? I think we'll just make it a square. Uh, squares are boring, let's, uh, let's go there. Look, we got this little bit here to stop it being a square. So the hope is after Miss Align has come along and dug out all of this regolith, not only are we gonna, <sighs> we really need a way of picking up all of this stuff down here as well. I wonder if we can get a sweeper down underneath without it. Uh, impacting the the scanners here. But anyway, once Mr. Line has come along and picked all of this up, I'm hoping that people will come along and repair these radiant liquid pipes so that we can start getting all this ethanol through and then dump, dump it, dumping it down here. I think the uh, the liquid of choice, if I press this one down here, will be petroleum. It kind of has to be. It's the only one with a temperature high enough to not instantly flash into gas when exposed to the temperature of space. Because, you know, space is hot. That's That's a thing. What have we got? 299 degrees here. Yeah, no, that's, that's fine. We can keep that cool. Okay, technically we've uh, emptied the ethanol tank, but as you can see, there's still a load left in the pipe. So I need to try and induce people to come over here just a little bit more importantly than they're currently doing. But it doesn't look like, if I'm to be honest, setting top priority on the repair seems to do anything on the actual errand. Oh, Mimi's on it. Okay, so that that's cool. I don't know if that was because we've set top level priorities here or not. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really not sure about this. It's like sweet orders you know how you have to go and like uh prioritize where the sweep is going to rather than prioritizing the actual order itself which you know kind of makes sense once you know about it i'm sure there's something going on here with the repair as well oh yeah here comes cubic and as i say nothing in the errands no wait oh no repair tidy mimi I, d I don't know i don't know so it turns out that the actual repair errand is on the errands but the delivery is not you know because they have to that's that that's a two-stage process for everything right you deliver the items then you do the actual thing that you want to do with the items it works for the buildings it works for the repairing it works for the operating it doesn't work for dig because what you're delivering for the dig all right and that now that the ethanol is flowing believe it or not was the easy bit Oh, and it's already broken. Oh, and it's already broken. I can't believe it. Oh, no. It's all right. We just got to get it through, and then we're going to just stop this. All right, it's not a problem. It's not a problem. Okay, here's the slightly harder bit. I want to extract petrol out of this area. Petroleum. Look, we got we got a little bit over here. I mean, it's a good start, but it's not what we. It's not entirely what we need. So we can use this pipe to bring it up. All right, let's turn. Let's, let's disable this one. Uh, I say disable. Let's decon. Oh, it says it is being deconstructed. Aha, I see why. Okay, in a moment, that will get deconstructed. Let's have a look at the pipes here and figure out. I'm going to jump over this way, pull up here, and then try and connect onto this pipe somewhere further up. We're going to uh, reverse the direction of all these bridges and just continue the movement and the flow up this ladder. Of course, for those of you who aren't aware, in my experience during these past 900-odd cycles, 
The building of the long pipes have been the longest job on, on this entire planet, or rock, or asteroid, whatever you want to call it. This is, the this is the thing that takes the longest. It's taken me half an hour so far to record the entire episode up to now, and I'm going to make a prediction that it's going to take me an hour just to build this pipe down. Oh, this is an interesting situation to find myself in. The hydrogen is backed up enough so that none of the oxygen is flowing out. This is totally the opposite to what I want. So what I'm hearing here is this needs to go up more to like 600. If it's uh, an entire... Okay, 200 will do. If it's an entire cycle, then we can't do that. Okay, let's, let's see if this works a little bit better here. Let's check in the gas flow. All right, this... I'm hoping we can empty the, the, the hydrogen out a little bit, to be honest. It might work if we had a little gas pump here, a uh, gas reservoir here, but to, honestly, all that would do is push the push the problem down into the future, right? It doesn't, doesn't solve it. I think by totally neglecting the entirety of the base, I've actually managed to get this pipe built in half an hour. Ooh, it really was neglecting the complete rest of my base. All I did was kept on uh, firing up the alarms, and, and we got here. So now what's going to happen is half of this and half of this are going to come up to here. Here. They're going to go either this way or that way. Though, honestly, I'm not sure what will happen at this split because this one is closer than that one. Didn't think about that. All right, well, anyway, uh, half of it, hopefully, will come down along this way and go up to our little petroleum cooler up the top. If I press the right button, we can get there quicker. Uh, and we really need to make... Oh, no. Wait a minute. We're in trouble. Uh, in, in fact, we're like red alert in trouble. X, get rid of these... Uh, th this is like the highest priority. Jelly is coming. Okay, that's fair enough. Let's uh, deconstruct this one. Uh, that's Mad Frank for there. And I also want to take out the wires in the back. I just want like all, bam, all of that. It, it's it's got to be done. Super fast. Go. Ideally, before this petrol gets up here. No. Oh, oh, where's the red alert, guys? Come on, go, 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 go. I think we're gonna do it. <laughs> that was like mid morning. We did that. Like it must have been like four in the morning. We woke people up for this. T Sorry, guys. I, I I I hate to do it, really, even though I do it all the time. Ooh, okay, so this petroleum coming in about 100 degrees. I think we're all right with that, and it's coming through. It's getting cooled down. It gets pumped into there. We're going to pump out about 80 degree petroleum, but more importantly, I want to know what temperature it comes back in afterwards. And this is the beginning of the uh, of the system here. We just need to wait for it to, uh, to get a little bit more full. So we need more petrol, right? That obviously means the thing we need to do is try and turn on this other oil well here, but I've just been looking at what's going on with the power up here and i've got to say i am not loving it so what i'm going to do instead is to drag this all the way across here we're going to take sweepy off of this main line but put it onto another power transformer at some point once this all gets built i will then rip this one down and i'm going to try and get this oil well here up and running because at the moment one just isn't enough in fact where is the person who's coming up fuck fuck no no get back down here come down and get this uh, totally open i'm going to put it back on a five because it looked like it would have happened at some point but you know whilst i'm talking to you seems like a much better time to make this happen yeah i'm making these things happen i am the uh, colony leader do not question me okay so we're gonna get a whole bunch of natural gas coming out of here i kind of want to watch it i kind of want to watch it the thing is the steam is at quite a high pressure though we know that the natural gas will float above the steam does this mean that actually what i want to do is put a flow tile there no because of the water okay we just gotta let it we just gotta let it diffuse that's fine that's fine it's gonna make its way up to the top left as uh cold things generally do uh sorry light things generally do uh and over here we have a, a gas pump ready to just pick up any gas that comes along uh, i like the little thing that has happened here uh where the coolant loop here is f freezing the steam into water uh, there, there's no, there's a vacuum behind there, there's just a vacuum by there, so the gas pump is like no, 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 but when the st the natural gas comes along it won't get condensed there, so it will become a natural gas to be pumped, uh, it'll be amazing so beautifully overnight the natural gas has full, uh, flown, flowed? Floon. I'm not sure what the word I want to use flowed into this uh, this area over here and uh, demonstrated the whole natural gas filling up the area that the steam could not and I think this should actually be the, uh, the the gas pump turning on for some reason it's not picking up the gas what is going on here uh, we're getting we're getting brief moments of vacuum and natural gas there we go it's off go 
Okay, with this entire line put down in here, I want to come along and destroy this whole bottom one here. We're going to leave the little connections running because, of course, we need that. But then I need to try and figure out what we're going to do for the power down in this oil well. Uh, just grab myself a transformer here. I'm just going to pop that. Let's turn it around. Pop that right there. I could have done with it one further back. Whatever. It will do. And then we'll also probably power the sweepy off it as well. That will be fine. Can we get a battery in here? We most definitely can. I'm going to make it out of steel because it is quite warm down here. Oh, a little bit of a stutter there. I'm going to collect all, connect all these together. Is that lead? I can't use lead. Not, not here. Okay, and hopefully we'll be getting to the situation where this will be running. But of course, there is something else we need. It is water. Thankfully, all we need to do is connect these together like that. Ah, oh, beautiful. There we go. It should very soon spring into life. Oh, and, and instantly, instantly it springs into life. Beautiful. So hopefully we're now getting double the petrol rate. And this should mean we, we can actually, like, you know, get our cooling loop up here working. That, that's kind of what we're waiting for, right? I mean, like, look at these little spits and spats. We need to do something about that. Okay, so we seem to have a bit of a problem where this one is getting a lot hotter than this one over here. I don't think it will be really that much of an issue because the oil reservoir, if we have a look, the oil well, sorry, if we have a look, the overheat temperature is like 1,900 degrees. You know, not something that we really need to worry that much about. Oh, not loving the way the power just died. Nothing that we have to worry that much about, but if the temperature keeps on climbing, what I'm going to do is move the me uh, mechanical airlock up one and then solidify this mechanical tile here so we can keep a little uh little heat sink of oil underneath the well and all the extra oil will then t carry the heat away down into our petroleum boiler i have a big fear brewing right now let's see how these go okay one goes up one's go i've only ever seen one get passed sideways i was really worried even though it went against everything i knew about the game mechanics going towards the closer output that all it was doing was feeding up up the line because uh, we even though it's a tiny amount we do kind of need the petroleum generator turning over if we can get it going up going a lot faster maybe this thermal aqua tuner could turn back on this seems to be the big hold up at the moment and i'm not quite sure how to get power specifically to it okay so we've got a little bit of a situation brewing inside the house here i've just noticed that we've had the starvation uh, warning up here for a very long long time very 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 long time uh and it's made me a little bit wary of what's actually going on here and i've noticed that these guys their uh, their their suits aren't getting any oxygen and the main reason is we keep backing up with hydrogen would you believe too much hydrogen so i think what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna like make the ba battery a lot more sensitive to being able to uh burn the hydrogen uh, i'm also extending the filter range on this so that hopefully hopefully it will just burn hydrogen for longer just keep burning the hydrogen man just keep burning the hydrogen i mean really i need to figure out a way of bleeding off some energy without without it being horrific Maybe another battery. So anyway, my simple fix for this is to disable this building. Uh, it's on a super high priority because last time we did this, it was a problem as well. So I've collected all the petroleum that we've got in this uh, this storage tank here. And I'm wondering how much 210 kilos actually is. So when it gets out and around the loop, are we going to have up to here? Are we going to have like, I don't know, maybe half of it? I, 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 I don't think there's actually half of it. I, th I think we may Maybe, maybe make our way up this pipe here. I wouldn't be overly surprised if we stopped at the corner, though. So let, let, let's see how well. Let's uh, speed it up a little bit. It looks like we're still floating. Oh. Oh, that, that's very small. Very small indeed. I have been going around trying to do what I can to upgrade the petroleum production, but it's still very, very slow. Mostly waiting on this thermal aqua tuner here. Keeps running out of power. Okay, it's complicated, but here's the entire system. It basically runs off of two separate batteries. This one controls the flow of the hydrogen generator and the power coming in if we can't, if the generator can't keep up to the uh, the power drain. I don't think that's ever actually going to be the case, but it's there just in case. But then up here, also as a just in case, this one will fire off if its power reaches 100% and will then stop at 90%. That will turn on this power transformer. The more I'm thinking about it, the more I'm like, do I want to go down to 70% so this system kicks back in? Maybe I do. Uh, but basically, this just drains the power if ever we need. So when the the, oh, the hydrogen backs up like this, there is still a draw on the power. It doesn't get into a deadlock situation. I think this is a massively, massively inefficient, but it works. It works. Right, this is the situation I like to see. Let's hopefully keep it this way. 
A low effort and lazy solution that's going to come back and haunt me in later days? No, no, it couldn't possibly be. But talking of lazy solutions that might come back to haunt me later, I think we're going to come over here and I'm looking at the number of hydrogen generators we have, not just here, but also up over this place. We could probably get two more go, well, one more going here and one more going up top. I have gone ahead and closed this door off to all duplicates and I've also made this gas filter completely non-functional. Uh, there is only pure hydrogen in here. Only will there ever be pure hydrogen in, in, in here. So the doors are closed. The filter is being destroyed. With that in... Oh, no, not like that. Like that. Uh, with that in mind, I'm thinking that maybe we can fit another hydrogen generator into this little crevice here somehow. We will have to move a wall in. But you know what? I'm willing to accept this risk. I see this a lot with duplicates trying to stand around waiting for their suits to recharge. I'm wondering whether a fourth would be in order, but man... We're having enough trouble with the oxygen as it is, right? Something weird has happened. So the first thing I noticed was a bunch of sour gas out here. I was like, okay, yeah, no, that, that's a thing, sour gas. So we must have heated something up. But look, this is what we've here. Have we have we melted an obsidian tile? We couldn't have melted an obsidian tile. They're just like super, super hot. Yeah, I, I, I actually don't know what we've done here. We're going to have to try and uh, figure it out. But uh, I'm going to put the obsidian tile back. No, that's mathic rock. Let's not do that. I literally want the obsidian tile if possible. We're out of obsidian. We're totally out of obsidian. Mm. Okay, I found some down here. We just need to build some ladders out, and that uh, should be happening very shortly. Okay, so we managed to fit one into here, and has it started depleting our hydrogen reserves anymore? I wonder how much these two can deal with, but I'm going to go with just the three for now. And then up here, we've got the two sharing. They seem to be doing a little bit better. Of course, the uh, automation seems to have also just turned off. Uh, that's not how you look. You look by doing this. Yeah, indeed, the automation has just turned off, uh, just waiting for it to, uh, to turn over. But that's it. That's good. That means we are now making some fairly decent power. Still not enough to keep everything running all the time, though. And there's the obsidian back in place. Beautiful. Now we just got to get someone down here to build it. Who's going to do it? Jelly Mad Frank. Mad Frank. Beautiful. I don't know about you guys, but every time I look at the follow cam and I just see this kind of icon out of the corner of my eye, I see a toilet roll being thrown. Look, this is the major bulk of the toilet roll, and then you've got the flappy bit coming out behind. I know it's supposed to be a camera, but I just I can't unsee it. Wow, 33 kilograms of sour gas as well. We must have flashed a whole lot of stuff into sour gas. I could have all been petrol. Oh. Oh, guys, I've been playing for about an hour and a half now. We have managed to increase the petroleum stocks by 17 kilograms. That's not a lot. We need a major rethink on what's going on here. So I don't know about you guys, but I got very curious as to what happened here and why we're now dealing with this sour gas explosion. And it turns out, for some reason, there was a little bit of abyssalite underneath this tile, and that bit of abyssalite vaporized away? Honestly, I don't know why it disappeared. But when it started losing its structural integrity, it meant that the obsidian tile above it wasn't being supported. The pressure of all the oil and the petroleum above was getting a little large. And, uh, I mean, as it is, that this this tile here is building up 600 kilograms. So yeah, with the uh, immense weight of the crude oil above it, the uh, obsidian tile gave way, started dripping through onto the magma underneath understandably created a bunch of sour gas and later on erupted out and gave us this particular problem i didn't catch it at the time so we are going to just have to live with it that's no problem but what is kind of a problem is the fact that we're just not getting enough water through this system here hey we've not done enough stuff today let's start another thread shall we all the way up at space over this way you can see that we have got ourselves a cool steam event now i was looking on reddit last night no in fact i I was actually looking on the f uh, clay forums uh, and I saw someone else struggling with this very problem. I saw a couple of screenshots of what they were doing and I was like, got it. Great, yeah, we'll do that. Obviously, I didn't look into any of the theory, so I'm going to mess it up big style. But shall, shall we do that, guys? I think we shall do that. I really wish I had enough diamond to make everything out of diamond. Shall we do it? I, I don't know what's the, the best th thermal conductivity. Should we try for, uh, for aluminium? That sounds like a good idea. It's just a cool steam vent. We're not gonna. We're not looking to uh, to boil up to like 
boiling hot lead uh, standards or anything like that. I think I think that's good. Quite like that. We want the base. We want the metal tiles. I think we want a high thermal conductivity. Copper sounds great. We're not we're not going to have enough though. Look, we've only got 600 and it costs 100 per tile. Lead really is a thermal conductivity, but like minus 20. I mean, I suppose tile. I don't, I just I don't think we're going to be melting stuff like that. So let's do something like so. I also want to get the food and I want to come down to some planter boxes. Uh, and we're going to put those there. But before we put the Weezwarts in place, because that's what that will be, we actually need to have a hydrogen atmosphere here because Weezwarts efficiency is actually based on the gas that is passing through. Hydrogen being one of the most efficient. I think it's all to do with the uh, specific heat capacity of the gas, though I may be wrong there. I didn't check it up, like I say. Uh, so yeah, this, this is good. Well, and we're just going to let the water pretty much drop all the way down here and we'll have a little pumping station underneath. Uh, let's get some insulated tiles on the go. Like we don't, we don't really, I don't know, let's have some breathing space this side. Let's have some breathing space. Mainly because, honestly, I don't want these temperature shift plates being able to pass their temperature into these uh, the, these insulated tiles on the side. That would be a bad. That would be a very bad, actually. Uh, so we're gonna have a door here. Uh, I like I like the whole like here here have three doors. Uh, have a little. Uh, is there something back there that's stopping me put the doors down? I don't know. I'm gonna try again. All right, I must have just messed it up. Uh, the the situation when we have one door that opens in the middle when the temperature is not correct because that then isolates everything off and it is beautiful. Though we are going to have uh, a bit of a, a heat store of water underneath, or a cool store, if you will. Uh, and then we'll need to bring these temperature shift plates, in that case, all the way down into that water. Okay, then on the other side, we're going to need a liquid pump to pick it up. And uh, that's pretty much it, actually. That is pretty much it. I'm going to want to put a bunch of ladders across the top, because we're going to want to have a little catch well here. Maybe we want to have a hydro sensor connecting it up so we don't flood this place. Yeah, that's probably not a concern. Let's not worry about it. Uh, we'll come up like this. There's the catch pool. Something like that. Beautiful. Uh, we'll stick another door here. And then we just... Ooh, a little bit of a, a stutter there. We'll have another door here. Grab ourselves some dig orders. Bam. Right. Looking good. A uh, small knock-on effect from the sour gas coming out is this cooling loop is unfortunately passing on the heat up here. I am going to have to, uh, to deal with that in a, in a very swift and... Um, uh, with prejudice manner. I'm just I'm just gonna completely remove that. There we go. Alright, that that should now stop that becoming a problem. I mean, it's still quite hot. Hopefully this will uh, get some power at some point and, and work. Ah. We're almost definitely gonna end up flooding the base like this, right? Yeah, I think I think I think we're probably gonna end up flooding the base. This goes all the way down. I mean I suppose we could just let it drop. That wouldn't be the worst in the world. But I'm just I'm watching these guys dig and I'm like, no, it's it's gonna go bad. Let's uh let's just raise the priority of the pump and the power system and and hope that it can keep up with it. I know, I know, I know, I know. Let's let's take this deeper. Oh, here we go. I was about to be like, let's take this deeper. Uh yeah, let, let's let's do that anyway. <laughs> to push that problem into the future and make it a bigger problem when it does arrive. <laughs> so I just did some quick calculations. Uh, 5.3 kilos of water every 396... What? Well, 5.3 kilos for 396 se uh, seconds gives you 2,099-ish um, kilos of water. It's, it's a 0.8 or whatever. Um to chill that down to 20 degrees which is where normally i'm trying to aim for with my uh with my water would we'll take 89 wheeze what's 89 i don't think that's one we're gonna go for uh we're just gonna have to once again go for ye olde standard um thermal aqua tuna which again is a lot of power i'm i'm not sure about this guys at least i'm getting some some free water to begin with right Oh, oh, here we go. First spillage. Knew it was going to happen. Uh, let's also turn the prior up on that one. Okay, that, it's not the not the end of the world. It's just a little bit of a spill. In fact, it's one that we can probably even just mop up. Okay, that's that's fine. As uh, as little disasters go, that was more than... Ma oh, there he goes. That was more than manageable. Oh, it's, it's off on a little journey, isn't it? it we're, we're off. We're going. Okay, how far down we get? Let's follow this drop. Bam! Okay, we're here as well. Of course, we're going to have to mop that up as well. Uh, okay, it's all collecting down here. I mean, that's pretty standard. Poor Sweepy. It, he's always, like, picking this water up. Oh, also, look. The gases, they're, they're differentiating again. I'm, I'm happy with this. And with Forrest just finishing the uh, the analysis, we can see there's actually a wake for ooh, about half the time, maybe two-thirds of the time that it's up. That's uh, that's pretty cool. That's that's a lot of water. That is a lot of water. 
Okay, and the pump is up and running. This should now provide quite a steady water source, especially as people go in and out doing the building all the time. Maybe, maybe, maybe we need to put the, the door in the roof. All right, stop laughing about it, actually. Uh, implemented that door in the roof. <laughs> I'm going to do another one of these bridge-ons from this main pipe coming down from the geyser up above. Because there's no point dropping it off with the liquid vent to just pump it back up, especially when we keep running out of power. So yeah, if we can get this igneous tile uh, bridge in place, not igneous tile, igneous, um, igneous rock bridge, that's what I was trying to say, in place, then it will just jump across very nicely, very nicely. But of course, trying to get someone to do that this close to the end of the... Uh, let's, let's just let's encourage people a bit stronger, shall we? We might need to reverse the priority here. So far, the water coming in from the geyser has got priority, but I think that's actually wrong. I think we want to uh, have this one coming down like this. We place that there. Uh, destroy this bridge here, and then we should be able to disconnect the uh, the pipes between these two. No, these two here, sorry. Uh, and then that will make sure that the water from this place is always taking priority over the water from this one. Well, that one is draining. I was kind of hoping the bridge got put in place before all the water drained out there so I could be like, look, see, this is how it's working. But Mad Frank seems to want to take a while. There we go. It's, it's now flowing down there, but we've still got flow from over here issues. And I keep pressing T by accident. I mean, I know how to solve this. It's just more liquid bridges, but it's a, a little annoying. But the most important part is the fact that it's now feeding both of these oil wells constantly. Hopefully we don't have an overpressure event down here, and this should keep the petrol flowing so that we can get the space being safe. That's what we're after, guys. Remember filling, the, filling this loop up? I mean, we're at, we're at 300 kilos now, so like we've, we've, we've increased it by a third. That's, that's pretty good, right? That's pretty good. Should we see what that translates to? Let, let's let's pump all this out and have a look. How much How much have we got? I, I've got a feeling we will be very lucky if, again, it makes it up to this corner over here. It's gone a little bit further than I was expecting already there, yeah, but already there. Yeah, okay, okay. We, it, it, it's better, but it definitely... Oof, we need tons, literal tons. Okay, we got rid of most of the sour gas, finally. Finally got rid of most of the sour gas with the crushers, so I'm just going to let natural diffusion do its job from this point. Wow, I say that. We're going to have one crush every every cycle by the looks of it. I mean, we could just literally make it once every two cycles. There we go. Beautiful. Yeah, that's nice, actually. That's nice. I don't get it. How is this liquid filter getting hotter than anything around it? Nothing is at 200 degrees. Maybe this crude oil. Let's sweep this up at a high priority. But I, I just don't get it. What? Oh, uh, yeah. Look at this bad boy now. Love it. Love it. We need to uh, keep it. Keep an eye on the temperature, though. 26, 27 degrees. It's getting a little hot. A little, little hot. Okay, so we've addressed the oil flow. The next thing to try and do is sort out the cooling down here. Now, the first thing I did was just go ahead and disconnect the system uh, from the main grid so that any power that is being made by these guys is being stored in this battery and then passed on down to the thermal aquatuna uh, as and when is needed. And actually, that has been working out incredibly well. Now, look at this one down here. It's taken it from 110 down to 70. Now, the thing is, I have disconnected this uh, radiant gas line over over here and this means that this old liquid filter is starting to get quite toasty 260 i believe it overheats somewhere yeah I, I need to turn this gas pipe back on and this is what i'm really worried about let's see what happens when this happens i'm expecting this one to turn off at some point let's just watch the thermosensor's temperature yeah it is climbing pretty steadily we're up to 100 already yeah that that has got big quick but you know there are some big temperatures out here or rather there were we're slowly slowly munching our way through them i think i could probably help the situation as well if we insulate one area from the other this area keeps dealing with its gases and then because people have to come up and through here to deal with the uh, the oil wells we keep getting a bunch of natural gas and steam pouring down here to do that of course i'm gonna have to run a, uh, a heavy watt bypass because we need to uh, put a, an airlock in here that's gonna take a little while we have polluted water down here coming through the pipe it's not a big problem because we've got a little of a package coming up here which uh i'm not i'm not sure why actually i've uh, 
disconnect to the pipe at some point, no problem. But the uh, polluted water is a problem. Now, in the utilities here, we have something that I've never used. The liquid tepidizer it must be fully submerged. I'm going to uh, fully submerge it here. I'm not sure how much power it takes. Let's press F2 and have a look. It doesn't tell us. It doesn't tell us. 960 watts. Okay, that's, uh, I mean, it's not ideal. If I'm to be honest with you, it's not ideal at all. But we will uh, we will run it off of here for now. It's running from the power uh, of this smart battery. So it'll be, it'll be fine. It'll work out, right? Got to make sure that all the polluted water gets vaporized the moment it lands. Also, the, these guys, they, they perform better at higher temperatures. So if we, if we can keep the temperature up high, that's, that's much better. This is going to become a problem. Let's, for the moment, disconnect the place where we want pure petrol to be going through. Uh, and we'll wait until all this is in place. Not submerged in liquid. I disagree. What? Oh... That's not very nice. Okay, we can we can make it submerged in liquid. I was just kind of hoping we wouldn't have to resort to this. Okay, I'm gonna put two tiles in there. I mean, that's already it, isn't it? That's 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 all we need. Can these guys climb there? I don't know. Let's put another tile in just to be sure. How does it have an overheat temperature of 125? All right, let's build it out of something more robust then. Okay, I've uh, done a crazy, I've gone and built a pump, pitcher pump down here, but that's because I've got a whole bunch of uh, molten lead down the bottom here. I want this bottle emptier to uh, to just get this molten lead as as much as possible. Let's get the the uh, let's get the auto bowl going. Uh, in fact, all the way up, all the way up. And I think this one here, can, can, is that also all the way up? I don't know. Let's just try it anyway. Let's see if people are going to come along and use it. Luna is going to come along and repair. That's, that's what that particular one is for. You know what, I'm kind of do need it to be repaired that's that's the thing though right that is the thing okay here comes some molten lead all right beautiful beautiful we're just gonna drop it on the floor and turn it back into a regular uh okay this is this is actually working out quite well this is actually working out quite well excuse all the alarms but right now we really need to move all that lead it's just a little bit too much you know Okay, okay, I, thi I think I think we got them. I can turn all the alarms off. I don't think there's any more lead available. Okay, so we uh, disable auto repair. In fact, we'll just furlong uh, deconstruct this. Uh, we can actually even go as far as to deconstruct these as well. Turn the alarm off. All right, turn the game back on. It should all be fine now. All right, beautiful, beautiful. We uh, have a little bit of a temperature issue here, but I don't think that's the end of the world. K9 to sweep all of that up because, of course, we need to get this lead out of here as quick as possible. Okay, lead, sweep only, big, big exclamation marks. Let's come and get these leads, guys. I need to I need to get these out of here as quick as possible. I don't know what we're going to do with this little bit here, but we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. No more pending deliveries. Beautiful, beautiful. A little bit worried that that bit of lead there is totally stealing all the temperature from this place. Yeah, we don't seem to be increasing the amount. Okay, let's uh, let's open this up. Let's just swap that around. Let's let this solidify, whatever this is. We'll have to pump out the uh, the crew, but that's not a problem. Okay, and then we can just pick this up. What is that, more lead? Ah, oh, we'll have to wait for the morning and do the same trick up here. Okay, the lead has been picked up. The alarms are running, so uh, pause the game. Uh, right, let's, let's see how long it takes for this to start being turned back into uh, petroleum. It's going to take a while. That, that little bit of lead really took out a lot of temperature there. You know what's missing from this entire setup down here? And I've only just realized, temperature shift plate. That would really, really help. Is uh, obsidian the one? I mean, it says it's thermally reactive. Yeah, let's go for it. Taking bets on what's the first thing it will break. Surprised at how much hotter this obsidian tile is compared to almost everything else. Obviously, the door is scorchingly hot as compared to the, uh, the the obsidian tiles underneath as well. I mean, like, wow. I mean, that's another step again. Um, so maybe we want to put another another shift plate in. I'm not sure, but uh, the first one did all right. Well, rather, the first one didn't break anything. So let's go ahead and do that. Ah, uh, look, the crude oil is making its way in there. That's a bit of a shame, but also, you know, that's, that's the way it works. Okay, for the moment, we've got mostly pure product coming through, so I'm going to allow that to uh, to skip up to the space. Uh, that That's what it's all about, remember? Trying to cool down space. Oh, triple speed. We're barely watching this uh, this temperature climb. That's a, it's a bit of a shame. It is a bit of a shame. I've been thinking for a long time that I want to do this, but I'm scared. 
forget about what will happen when I do, so I'm not going to. Because the moment this tile gets broken, we get a lot of crude oil touching 800 degrees. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I'm thinking I'm going to reduce this down to zero, a number that it will never reach, uh, so that we can just keep this warming up. Uh, we'll just let it get up to temperature and then start the flow up again. Uh, I'm hoping that the thermal mass inside all of this would actually help out uh, keeping everything up nice and nice and high of a temperature when the, when the flow is going through. Quick check to see how much uh, petroleum we've actually... What are you there? Oh, no, we've had some polluted water go through. Well, it, it will boil out. That's fine. Let's not worry about it. It'll break a pipe and then we'll fix the pipe. Uh, that that will be fine. But look, oh, we're, do we're doing all right, actually. We've got a fair amount. That, that little, uh, little spurt of stuff that we sent up from down below a moment ago definitely seems to have given us... What's this, about half of it? It looks like maybe, if not more, are we actually going to be firing it up at this point i think we can probably just leave this running now it's way over half and maybe even up to uh, a third uh, two thirds yeah i like this i like this a lot uh yeah let's 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 let it start trying to cool stuff down let's just leave it for the moment it's we're gonna have more stuff added on at all times but you know it is searingly hot let's see if we can bring that down a bit i mean not not like this we're not going to wait nothing's turning over you're turning over you're not. What's going on? You're over pressure, unbreathable gas, pipe blocked, F6. Let's see what's going on. Because these are... Oh. Because these are not getting power? Is that what we're saying? Yeah, because they're not getting power, we can't empty out the water. Okay, I mean, that's a bit bit cyclical don't you think a bit cyclical this is providing a little bit of power but not enough not even slightly what have we got over here this is dormant oh no uh this is dormant this is doing whatever it is this does <laughs> i like that we're cycling the the crude back though i'm not sure whether this even works right now Oh, we've got the petroleum dance. Let's slow this down and have a look at what's going on here. Okay, I'm hoping that nothing's actually being lost in this process and it's just a, just a, a waiting to hit the right temperature moment. I mean, this me metal tile really is losing a lot of temperature. How is it dropping down so much? Come on, we've, we've got like full-on magma power here. How? 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 I'm going to try something. I'm going to try something. I was uh, perusing online uh, through the forums and they were talking about heat deletion bugs uh, and one of the things that has happened in the game is uh, that they're, they're trying to simulate convection but they're not really doing it very well uh, if there are two gases with uh, with temperature and the hotter one is below the the upper one you would have thought they would have swapped place but no they actually swap temperature which if you've got more gas of uh, below than above you lose and if you've got more gas above than below you gain temperature uh so i'm wondering whether that's going on here so let's let's try and restrict this place down and see what we get i'm a little bit worried that it's going to be too restricted and dupe aren't going to be able to get mo get moving through here but you know we'll just have to have to wait and see what happens right okay we're gonna have to uh warm these airflow tiles up but i think we should be better now hmm crude viscous Okay, Luna's come down to do a little bit of mopping over here, but obviously there is a lot of water in the way. Uh, I'm very interested to see what happens. I'm, I'm imagining almost everything's going to flash to steam the moment it drops in here, and then, of course, this gas pump will do its job and pick everything up, dump it out here. But uh, will, will the liquid pump get, get, get a look in at any point? I don't know. I don't know. No, it's just filled with steam. Not really helping our flow situation, though. Oh, I get it. It's tiny amounts with petroleum on top. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. Okay, confusingly, the airflow tiles just have not absorbed any temperature at all. The metal tile is up nice and hot, though everything else seems to be taking a little while to get there. But I'm kind of all right with this, as long as we do get there. As long as we do finally get there. We appear to be at the point where we are making some petroleum over here. So let's turn this number up to uh, 100. We know that's a number that works. So let's see if this now opens up on this side. We're going to get a little bit of flow. This is going to spike up in temperature. They, they started there. This should now hopefully, once it reaches the high enough temperature, close back down. We'll get a little bit of flow through there. That's fine. But why isn't this then closing afterwards? There we go. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, hopefully we'll just process a bit of that through and uh 
maybe think about removing some of these airflow tiles at some point. So we seem to have got up to a nice temperature here. And as you can see, even with a lot of uh, oil flowing down into here, we're turning most of it into petroleum. We've had a few cycles running through and majority of the time we're just passing it all up through the chain of filtration here and coming down and pumping it back in because it's just so much crude oil. But that's all right. That's fine. That means we've warmed it up a little bit and we get to send it back even though we did cool it down afterwards mm, that that that's cool though that's good but more importantly up here we can see that we have been adding more p petrol to the mix and this has been coming around i'm wondering what temperature we're at we're still at about 250 the big problem of course is power for this one and i'm not sure how what i can do to make this guy his own little power plant somewhere because it's kind of important that that is made and I don't, I don't want to once again just rely on like, I don't know, take these two out and you know, let's, let's do it. Let's just take these two out and put some treadmills in. There's something that tells me my cooling plan is not going to work. The insulated pipe has managed to pass enough heat through to this water to flash some of it up into steam, but it has not been a, a there has not been enough thermal conductivity between the steam turbine and the radiant pipe to pass on this 250 degree uh, petroleum heat to the 30 degree steam turbine that means it's not going to work with the cold either well once again an episode that i thought would be trying to get into space and do new and interesting things has actually devolved into trying to troubleshoot a lot of the background situations so that we can have the resources to do said thing i think next time we're just going to go ahead and take the lessons that we learned from this geyser here and uh, implement them up over this way i believe it to be a geyser right here is this no that's obsidian so somewhere around here there's some neutronium and use it to make this hydrogen vent a very viable uh, power output. I notice we're very close to this water, water, so maybe we could use that for cooling, or maybe we could use the power here for cooling, but mostly we're trying to get the power just to give the base some power. And with that, I am going to say thank you very much for joining for this adventure, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you guys next time, where I say we're going we're gonna to get the hydrogen vent up and running and hopefully become power independent again, because we've really just let it all run away from ourselves. But I'll see you then when we're going to do that. Bye.